think it was a turning point in Calgary's development. I think we are what we are today because of that Calgary stampede, and really, frankly, because of Guy Wiedek. I think his kind of international vision and his relentless optimism and his, his relentless salesmanship for Calgary meant that we could we can dream bigger here, and I don't know if we would have. Wiedek was born large, you know, he, he was uh, born in Rochester, New York, and it was a town that was uh, filled with bustling um, excitement, immigrant people coming to the country and making their way. It was also a town of ideas. There was, had a lot of newspapers, a lot of um, speakers coming to, to town, the Chautauquas were nearby. So he grew up in an Irish community, which was also very much talking. Um, and he was very impressed with the stories of the Wild West. I think, I think everyone was at that time, and they were just starting to emerge. Um, Guy Wiedek would have heard them from letters home from his relatives who had traveled out west. Um, uh, Buffalo Bill um, brought his Wild West show through Rochester where Guy was, so he probably saw him. Um, and I think it was the popularity of the Wild West moving from the open range, which was closing down, onto a new arena, which was much, actually much wider than anyone dreamed. So, so people really had a sense of, of this land of open opportunities where a man basically could make his wits, you know, living off his wits in the open territory. So it was a very romantic thing, and it certainly captured Guy's imagination. Guy Wiedek really saw the opportunities uh, that the new media were providing. So he was a showman, and he understood how to put together a good show. I think, I think he paid his dues. He worked as a cowboy um, on the ranch. He worked as a cowboy. Um, I don't think he was a very good cowboy because I'm sure he talked too much. But what he did do was listen. And he was really interested in the authentic stories of the Old West and how things had happened before. And always throughout his life paid respect to that. That was very important to him. So he, he traveled in the vaudeville circuit and um, had an act where he would rope things and talk and do these kind of tricks. Um, and I think he saw how, he learned in the vaudeville circuit how to put together a good show. How you start slow and then you have a funny act and then you have a longer act. And, he was very good at promoting things. He always dressed the party, had a big, big distinctive hat on. He was very tall and kind of glamorous looking. So he really knew how to present himself. I think he, he, saw, he saw the attraction of Buffalo Bill and how he presented himself. So he took advantage of that as well. He always made sure he had very good photographs taken of him. That was part of his promotional um, flair that I think he had. He married a woman who was very short, it was kind of t petite. She was very athletic, uh, Florence Ledoux, she was about five foot. So you can imagine the two of them together. And I think they played on that, you know, they, they, knew, what, they knew what they had. Um, and always dressed the part, always kind of dressed Western and talked Western. Guy Wiedek had, had kind of done his homework because he came up here for the 1908 exhibition that was uh, celebrating agriculture and, and the, 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 it was really celebrating the excitement of Calgary and where it was growing. So he saw that and he looked around and knew from the travels that he had had with the Wild West shows what made a good city, how receptive the audience was going to be and I think he really felt that this was a place that could, that could do that. Um, and he tried to sell it, first of all, um, to the exhibition, Ernie Richardson, and they weren't quite ready for it at that time. Um, he meets with the big four. Um, these were ranchers who had been, who had taken chances on their own careers and their own ranches. And I think if you're looking at risk takers, ranchers are hands down the biggest risk takers, but also the biggest visionary people who can actually see the potential of what's happening here. These are men who had made their fortunes in the West and their fortunes were growing and they could see that the town itself, and the, well it was a city then, was growing. And they wanted, I think, to give back and they wanted to celebrate what had gone before. So um, they saw what Guy was talking about and got it. Their own, their only kind of caution to him was make it the real thing. Like, don't turn it into Hollywood. Make it the real thing, because we want, you know, we want our, we want people to understand their heritage, where it's come from. And that, that absolutely spoke to Guy's heart. I mean, that's really what he, he wanted to do, and this was the place to do it. I think probably the ink wasn't dry on the check, and he was phoning and contacting everybody he knew. Um, he had great networks that he had built up, and knowing Guy, he had probably been laying the groundwork. There might be a show coming up. 
um, but he spoke to people who were willing to come to something that was new. They did, he couldn't even describe what it was, <laughs> and yet they still came. So he had connections with all of the great ropers, the Mexican vaqueros who came. He had uh, connections with the outstanding women performers, and his wife was a performer as well, and he knew that that was a draw. He could go to people like uh, John Mc Reverend McDougall and ask for the First Nations to be involved, which was very important to him. Um, and then Charlie Russell, because he knew it was about culture as well. Um, so he brought in the names, like the big names at that time. Ed Borain was there. And he did everything he could to stretch that out. He did a parade that was longer than anybody had seen. People arrived, and they, I don't, they didn't have rules for most of the competitions, but people had heard about it. And the excitement that he took out um, just by constantly barraging, really barraging people with advertising in his letters and his bold handwriting, you know, you, you couldn't you couldn't not come. That was the thing to go probably in North America. <laughs> it must have been wild. Um, they, train loads of people were coming in. They had to set up extra tents. Every hotel in town was booked. Um, people didn't, they didn't even know what they were paying for when they came. I think a lot of it was just, but it was exciting. Um, it rained. It was, you know, it was all these things that you, you don't want with any kind of event, but still they came. And they came to the, the uh, grandstand and they wouldn't leave. They couldn't even see the competitions down at the other end because they didn't really have the rules kind of set out, but they still they came so it was and everybody nobody felt cheated out of it they felt that they had been witnessing something really important I think he would be pretty proud I think because it's an international story and that it hasn't been lost and that people people come from all around the world and that Calgary is known for it you know I think he would be that was his, that's his legacy. They didn't have children, so this is definitely part of his legacy. So yes, I think he would be really proud.